Hey everyone, super excited uh, to finally uh, be interviewing Carl. We've tried this a couple times yes. and we keep miscuing. <laughs> We're on uh, different orbits, but uh, sure. it's finally happening. Uh, Carl's an amazing artist. He's, um, you know, he draws, he paints, he uh, does performance art, he's a writer, he does art books. Uh, super colorful background of all, all this, all this stuff. But we're going to be diving in today into some of his two-dimensional, three-dimensional, mm -hmm. sort of more 2D collage mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Carl's no stranger to the interview process. He's done some. He, mm -hmm. he produced a thing called Art Speak, absolutely, uh, yes. produced by Viacom, I think. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, interviewing performance artists right. Philip Glass yeah, yeah. and Zappa yeah. right. and um, right. Robert right. Wilson. All which, those big names. Yeah, it's huge, <laughs> huge. Um, so, uh, but what I think is so cool and so interesting and what I want to dive into is, is out of that mix, out of that broad base, mm -hmm. um, we're here, we're today. And so let's just jump in and we'll, we'll kind of backtrack a little back Absolutely, and forth, but kind so of on. into um, what are you excited about and what, what do you, where's your work now? I mean, I'm, we have some samples here behind right, right. it. It's right. painting and doing different things. Right. Where are you on it? You know, what I would say about uh, the pieces that I brought today, and these in, in particular, uh, a lot of color. I'm, I'm, I was so resistant for so long to uh, explore color. I began uh, uh, creatively, well, as a musician, but as far as the uh, plastic arts, uh, as a, uh, well, not even plastic arts, but as a visual arts, as a photographer, as a black and white photographer. So when I uh, had the courage to uh, move into uh, mm, the plastic arts, if you mm -hmm. will, of fine art, my work predominantly was black and white or uh, neutral tones and all this business. There was not a lot of color because I really didn't know what my relationship with color was. Now, it looks like I've completely mastered that and that I don't give a damn and all of that business, but I still do have, I do still approach very uh, prudently uh, the use of color. Oh, really? um, and the deal of it is, is that there is something innate, I think, that excites me about uh, color, or the use of color, etc. But there's still, for me, a strong element of what's neutral and black. Yeah. I still am into And I think that's what I, I because I have that in my work, and that's probably yeah. why I've kind of followed your okay. work and tracked it. Mm. But um, yeah, but it feels really, uh, that's interesting you're saying that, feels just really super fresh and intuitive, mm -hmm. and so that's relatively new. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the deal of it is, is that um, I like to challenge myself, and uh, so as one challenge, I won't say is conquered, but I've modified it or I've addressed the fear, then I look at some other element uh, that uh, I feel uh, resistance or some kind of inhibition. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I'm laughing. When you were describing uh, my background, uh, I was going to end, he's schizophrenic, you know? It's like, you know, all of these things, well, how the hell do these things interrelate? Or how do but they But I mean, everyone's got that weird mix. Yeah. I mean, yours is yeah. just particularly yeah. colorful. I mean, yeah. you've done so many kinds of art. I right? have been extremely fortunate uh, being mentored. Now, this is still jumping back as opposed to, we're going to get yeah. into today, yeah, no, believe that's me. Fine. That's yeah, fine. I know it is. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the deal of it is, is that, um, I have always, be it the uh, jobs that I would work four hours, like, you know, to pay the rent kind of things through the years. I mean, since uh, 1984, I would simultaneously be doing uh, writing for like High Performance, Art Week, uh, Art Scribe International, working four hours, maybe three hours a day or uh, three uh, days out of the week uh, uh, in uh, development, fundraising for like the San Francisco Symphony, the ballet or whomever. Uh, because I did not have the commitment to doing a nine to five. In the old days, uh, from about 18, I worked in radio. I worked for uh, corporations that, uh, you know, that are, let's just put it like that. They were corporations. And yeah, so right, it's like, right. pardon my French, uh, but that's okay. You know, I just had a, uh, the early experience and uh, revulsion, if you will, uh, to that way of living or that way of identifying myself. So, uh, as I say, I did music uh, initially uh, from my teens till my 30s or so. And uh, then all of this was always about, you know, getting the courage to 
be a visual artist. And when did that kick in, like that courage piece? That great question. I would say through collaboration, Uh, uh, so that I I have someone, uh, uh, a comrade in arms, uh, Mm -hmm. a fellow traveler, where we could explore uh, together and uh, do collaborative work. You know, uh, in school, I was always uh, the person and whoever I was working with, we were the people that, you know, the instructors would go and the other students, what the hell are they doing? What are they up to? <laughs> right. But what was funny, which unfortunately puts me at odds ultimately uh, with ac- academia, uh, is that as soon as we re- our work came into fruition, and we're talking like 75, 76, actually 72, 3, 4, 5, because I was doing a lot of stuff, but I was mainly going home, and all night long we would either take photos, we'd We'd um, uh, cut them up, uh, we would uh, uh, weave them together. We just wanted to go the next step, next step. We're all being a big influence uh, in right, those days. Right. Anything and everything is absolutely is available. Give me the tape recorder. Let me, <laughs> let me see. Let's see. Where's the camera? Let's shoot the audience now and all of that business. And, and that's why in, in this age, you just get off on a tangent. The computer, the uh, digital stuff is like, oh, poor Andy. He didn't yeah, live yeah. long enough. He, oh, he, he, he almost he was there. Yes, exactly, right? So, you know, there was, to go back to the school thing, there was never the support uh, from uh, my instructors. Uh, um, I was, by the way, political science major and uh, with a minor in psychology, uh, which kind of related, in my mind, to political art, uh, the voice of the people, this kind of right, business, right, right. Uh, understanding psychologically uh, through an empathy of what people need or you know what I could offer, and uh, that got translated. And that's an important thread in, I think, my story. All yes. of these disparate elements that make me up or my background, sometimes I kind of go like, whoa, I, yeah, I did that too. There's, there's a connection, and the connection is expression, and um, in my mind anyway, uh, being something of a uh, of a, uh, a vehicle, if you will, to bring others into it, and so oh, the collaboration, great. for instance, is great. But believe me, uh, I'm I'm not philanthropic. I'm not like Mr. Goody Two Shoes. Right, I no, think I'm right. a nice, kind guy because basically, and I'm happy to say it, all of these things uh, uh, funnel into my practice or my needs and my goals and very, you know, altruistically and very sincerely, I understand the, uh, that connecting with other people, um, to learn from other people. And that's the other thing about Mm -hmm. this kind of Mm -hmm. multi-level, uh, grouping of my experiences that I've learned by doing all of these things. So the jobs have been, um, uh, arts related, whether it was uh, being an artist in these situations, you know what I mean? I've, I've done arts administration with NEA right, grants, right, blah, right, blah, right, blah, 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 right. blah. I you know. know, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Well, I've been really fortunate yeah. and I've been mentored by, I, w- I will tell you, I, I believe geniuses. I, I yeah. have just been a lucky person in that respect. But did you <laughs> seek those people out? I mean, when you wanted no, to learn something, no, or you, no. you're just like paying attention and yeah, not things are coming into your I, I, I just was, it, it was just fortuitous. It was in the beginning. I mean, what's cool is that you mm-hmm. you were on purpose, actually, mm-hmm. is what is, mm-hmm. is that thread, I mm-hmm. think, mm-hmm. This, uh, this idea you're saying. Yeah. And, and when that happens, things, alignments happen. Very and and so. I think you're, you're a proof so. of that. There's a spiritual element to it, and I don't feel corny to say it, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, I, I have been in the right place at the right time, and I will say conversely, the wrong place at the right time, too, sometimes mm-hmm. in my life. but. But primarily, uh, there's, I, I feel very, here's that other word, blessed. Uh, but I do, I actually do. Yeah. I recognize that there's like an energy that is outside of myself that we all uh, have access to, yeah. that yeah. we all can channel the energy into creative pursuits, and that there is no uh, enterprise, absolutely not. Even Donald Trump has a creative side. Right. It doesn't mean he's in touch with it, or his right. creative side right. is being, you know, right. a master of evil or whatever it is. <laughs> Sorry about the political commentary. You know? No, no, yeah, no. Yeah. I, I get it. I get it. I mean, I think that the art making process actually is is a way that we practice that universal principle of yes. synchronicity yes. and intuition and mm-hmm. what's our soul want. Mm-hmm. And we actually get better at that. And our art improves at the same time. Absolutely. And I mean, I totally see that in your work. And that was something that I'm really drawn to about it. I feel like your 
I can feel the process of it where you're just walking around the room, you're grabbing different mm -hmm. things, you're putting it together. Mm -hmm. Do you work on multiple pieces at a time? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Simultaneity, uh, whether I'm consciously trying to work in series, it, 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 there's a yes and no to that. Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. For me to be open, to have this principle I call no mind, and that is mm. to not critique, to not, I, I, of course I have goals and I have a plan and I want right. to see something. But at, <laughs> You want at, something good. At but, that yeah. moment of execution, it's like, uh, you know, we're all in kindergarten again and yeah. I don't know anything. I don't care what I've done before. But how did you get that? How do you know how to do, like, that's such a cool thing yeah. and it's, it's something I try to teach and mm -hmm. it's something I try to work on it myself. Mm -hmm. Have you just, is that your superpower? I mean, did you have that? Or how do you I, develop, I, how do I, people develop, people watching yeah. this, how do they develop that? Well, here's the deal. And again, I, <laughs> I'm laughing because I, I will use some language that I cringe at sometimes, I but I had a practice of meditation and yoga for decades. That's, uh, yeah. yeah. On a daily basis, be it 10 minutes or, or, you know, four hours, whatever it may uh -huh. be. And you were saying something before that kind of segues uh, and resonates for me, is that, if you will, the spiritual aspect of the soul of the artist being bared or the soul of the creative person, uh -huh. even if he's an accountant, you know what, these products uh, represent who I am. Your products represent who you are. And uh, it can represent, I think, I, our higher nature. It can represent yeah. the, the, the unadorned, uh -huh. uh, non-judgmental, uh, uh, you know, we're naked. We can be completely naked and comfortable with that. So if I have uh, preconceptions that I am absolutely insistent on uh, executing or realizing, that for me limits what that flow can be about, where I am really uh, connected to and unified with every gesture, every discovery, every surprise, etc. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think also that this work for me feels authentic. It feels like me. And, and conversely, not to, not to be a you know a congratulatory society, I think that your work for you feels like you to you. You know what I mean? More and more mm -hmm. and more, probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, I you know I remember when it didn't, but I think it I think that's uh, something that happens. It's like you sure. grow up together. Right. What I find really satisfactory is is that sense of discovery. Uh, it's both a challenge and it's also a gift. Mm -hmm. Or a gift that is given to me, not mm -hmm. you know, yeah, etc. And I enjoy that uh, that sense of spontaneity. I call, for instance, uh, and, and, and what's nice about we were talking before the interview began about uh, teaching how you transmit certain things. Well, you know what? What I realize through uh, teaching or uh, uh, participatory workshops is that I have to come up with language to, uh, of course, through demonstrating, hopefully you transmit, right, but right, you know right. what, we have to also appeal to uh, uh, the, uh, the analytical side of our brains or our nature. And um, I, I call my workshops or my method uh, uh, controlled uh, improvisations, mm. you know, structuring chaos, right. basically. Right. Which is performance. Also. Which is performance. Yeah. And, and yeah, so there's yeah, that yeah. physicality to working right. and painting and making strokes. Ah, yeah. And I, I know you know you see this too, or you experience this as well. It's funny uh, whether, uh, you know, some artists, if you will, or some of the people that I participate with, whether it's uh, something on a table or it's uh, uh, an easel or it's on the wall, it's mainly, it's not even that kind of flow, it's mainly this and, you know, the fears, and it's like, you know, something just flow, just get the body involved. That's why working large, like with the Wailing yeah, Wall, right, we can talk right. about that, and it's very important. It is performance. Yeah. It is absolutely performance, and it's non-self-conscious performance. It's like saying, I can stamp my feet, I can sing, I can whistle. Well, guess what? Do what you, you have yes. the potential to do yes. and translate that into you yeah. know, the plastic arts. One of the, <clears throat> you know, in workshops, uh, beginning day kind of thing, mm -hmm. I'm talking about, you know, some people in the room are going to be uh, more, you know, analytical and yeah. other people are more loose and messy mm -hmm. and other people. But 
the people that are really loose and messy, they can learn and play around yes. with being really tighter. Right. And the people that yes. are really tight, there's not yes. one way. That's exactly right. We all have yeah. that range, but right. what we want to do is broaden that range. Exactly. And it's like, yeah. bring, we want all of you. We want yes. all of you. We yes. want the scared part. We want the confident Absolutely. part. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but I, I, you know, and that's a great little connector where it is, it's, it's performance. When you teach, I'm just curious, mm -hmm. um, people are, you're just drawing, I mean, this is what I do too, mm -hmm. you're just drawing, trying to draw out of people what they would intuitively make on their own. Yes. Uh, how, how, you said, you mentioned the wailing wall, like right. what is that? That's a, that's sort of a interesting To thing. kind of, uh, uh, to uh, uh, segue, I guess, into the wailing wall, and, and, and it is absolutely, you know, part of the continuity, I think. You know, it's, uh, one of the things I tell people is, uh, what I'd like you to do is to break out of your habitual modes of working, thinking, just for today. Just for today. You can all, if it doesn't work for you, you can always go back to it tomorrow. Yeah, right. And that idea that you had is, is absolutely correct, I think. Uh, it, it's the, the tight person or someone who is tightly controlled can get loose, and the person who's more loose can get a little bit of discipline, perhaps. <clears throat> so I've come up with, and again, it's it's it <laughs> it's reflective of uh, exactly the way that I work uh, creatively, uh, because how I work creatively is absolutely how I live. I mean, believe me, you know. And I'm just kind of like, well, that, that's why I say, well, that's me, and you know, that's how I do it. Um, <laughs> With the Wailing Wall, for instance, um, that sense, and working on simultaneous surfaces, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's some exercises to get loose, uh, so, you know, just make these uh, spontaneous marks, don't even look at the marks, etc. Uh, be mindful of the fact that you want to look at what you're doing, but try to not do it, and don't judge yourself if you do, because why wouldn't you? That's what you usually do. Right, right, so it's right. just like being aware of, uh, like, you know, having uh, a bird's eye view of oneself and how you work without right. judging it if you can't. And it doesn't happen in one workshop, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. But that so, objectivity to, like, rise up above, yeah. to have that viewpoint, right. and then also this viewpoint down here. Exactly. Like up close and the far away. Yeah. And, and look how you interpret instructions or how you interpret uh, suggestions. Uh, in, in the opening exercise where I say, now tear the paper in half. Well, guess what? Which is absolutely understandable. People tear it in the middle or they tear it on the side. It doesn't have to be straight. And, and, and some workshops will say, I'm not answering any questions. Just you, you figure it out. And sometimes I'm a little more gentle about mm -hmm. it. But I realize that it doesn't matter how... Succinctly, I articulate something, it's still open to interpretation, and that had to become all right with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. We, we go from one exercise to the next, and uh, I'm going, you know what, if you get to a point, and this is to like get, again, get out of the habitual ways of working just for today, you get stuck. Well, you know, I'm sure like, well, well Nicholas, hi, Carl, what do I, how, how, do, how do I complete a piece? I get stuck, and I'm going, mm, okay, I've never heard that before, no, you know. Right. But so here's one way that you can do it. You're working, one way that kind of uh, modifies that or, or deflates that idea or, or takes the strength away is that you're working on multiple pieces, whether it be in series or you can work, I'm stuck, I can't work over here and then work over here, that's right, fine. Right, okay, right. so that's one way. But I realize that let's, let's kind of increase the, uh, the, the uh, not the complexity, but the, let's, let's have another layer here, is what I call the wailing wall. And it may be as long as uh, the entire wall here, it could, usually it's about 12 feet by six or something like that. And it's just either canvas, rolls of paper, laminated paper, whatever. The deal of it is, is this. Of course, there's an exercise where I have people paint backwards uh, so that without you know, un unconsciously making a mark, uh, but I said, listen, uh, keep your tools clean throughout. I mean, because that's part of a practice. It also takes you away from what you're doing. You can go back with a fresh eye. Yeah, or go right, sweep right, the floor right. or something. Or go for uh -huh, a walk. Uh -huh. So, you know, there are, these things are multi-purpose, uh, but toward one aim, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, They're mm -hmm. multifaceted toward one yeah. aim. So the wailing wall, um, you get frustrated, go play on the wall. Uh, you need to clean your brush or you, you're finished with the red or candium and uh, no one wants it, go smear it on the whaling wall. Right. So by the end, and I tell them now, by the end of uh, the workshop or the mentoring session, what you're tasked with is to make those marks coherent. Don't worry about it in the beginning. Oh, oh and, so you and, actually try to turn it into something. Then you turn it into something uh -huh. by the end. 
but that's just the suggestion. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It doesn't right, matter. Right. You so know? there's tremendous freedom in that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and it also allows me, uh, while people uh, hopefully, uh, and it usually seems to be the case, become engaged in, uh, in the first, second, third hour, or whatever, in their own work, and then the collaborative aspect of the workshops are usually I'll say, now give that to someone else and let them work on it, or you guys work, et cetera. Yeah, right. So they're absorbed, hopefully, if I'm doing my job right. And sometimes I will go play and just you know try to do a little organizing. Yeah. And, and I'm sure as you do sometimes, just your uh, uh, the demonstration of what your practice is like apparently is also beneficial sure. uh, to people. Because again, it's, it's, there's one level of uh, communicating and that's verbal. There's another level by the actual yeah. practical application of the philosophy or whatever. And, and your, your art though is about, it's about <laughs> collaboration mm -hmm. and it's about just doing, it's in so much in the moment. Yeah. Uh, and what I love about your work is that it doesn't feel like you're too concerned with trying to make work that that it looks like it came out of you know one person almost right. it all right. has that feeling so right. it does right. look that way right right it's all disparate right yes. but it all hangs together because of right. that and that's a right. cool thing right. i don't know if you realize like that's something that a lot of artists struggle with but mm. it's it's your work has a feeling and a look to it but it's the feeling is that it it doesn't have to, it's not, it's, right. there's no intention of it trying to be mm -hmm. this and then this and this and they all look like they've mm -hmm. been made at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. None of that. Mm -hmm. The point of the art. It's you know, interesting to hear. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's, it's very cool. So it all hangs together as a result of that. But how do you help people with, mm -hmm. with that challenge of developing themselves and they want a style and they want to look and, and like it's that. like, you're, you're just, yeah, I mean, that, that's a kind of. Well, you know what? That's one a question, but it has so many elements to it or so many yeah. parts to it. Um, I, I can tell you that my workshops or my mentoring or whatever, uh, are they've got to be exper experimental because that's what's interesting to me. Right, I have right. to be interested. I have to stay yeah. engaged. I have no problem not ever doing it again. I really don't. As long as I'm, <laughs> it's like I, I'm engaged. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, exactly. And yeah. I've maybe yeah. gathered what I want, but I continue to learn and I continue to see that kind of glow uh, mm -hmm. that people have because apparently my uh, workshops are very energetic. Apparently, they're uh, distinctly different in some facets than anything else that anyone has seen. But to me, it's just, well, let's say, why can't I do it here? You know, and, yeah. and, and, and it comes up that way. But this idea about how do things hang together, you see, that, that deceptive quality of just total chaos or total looseness, sometimes I just kind of listen or have to listen to someone's assessment of uh, what the work is, my, either my work or what my style is. And you know, sometimes it's like close but no cigar, and that's okay because I know by learning right. uh, what I'm doing, right. what I'm doing. Right. So there is uh, there is uh, a, 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 an almost hyper structure that eventually comes into play. But as I say, there it's like controlled chaos. I enjoy just like going for it, just yeah, do everything so cool. possible, yeah. and then edit back. Or find or challenge myself to uh, find ways to, and I keep saying the word coherent, but to weave things together to make this yeah. something that both I'm proud of. And as I said, I really I, I enjoy hearing what people's responses are mm -hmm. uh, to the work because uh, it 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 kind of uh, it, it can remind me of uh, what my process has been and what it currently is. Right, at you're this using time. the feedback to, to, yes. to because it's collaborative, and I yes. think a lot of us make work and you know, it's our work and we think the outside world might like it or not, but we're right. making our work. Right. But your work is, is it's this. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. It, you know, and back to that idea about mm -hmm. what, what your look of is your work and this, mm -hmm. and you're articulating it really well that you're just doing what's interesting to you. And I mean, that's kind of the, that's the advice. Like, I think so. If you're yes. excited, yes. you got it. Like, you yes. just this is all going to take care of itself. But you Thank better you. Exactly. be excited. You, you know? got it. Yeah. And and it's uh, it, it, to paraphrase because uh, you got to paraphrase. You know, doing this stuff. There is the idea, but you know, I need the excitement. But this is the this is a tricky thing, and I've learned this for myself. And I I don't really feel it or see it or uh, until I see what the uh, responses when I do articulate it and it is, yeah, go ahead and just do it. Don't worry about yeah. it. Because you need to trust yourself enough 
that it will be resolved. Right, and right. that's like, that's news. Yeah, that's yeah, news. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that trust so, and that faith, yeah. all of this. And it is. It's the, your life, and then yeah. it's also your art, you know. Yeah. So. so it's like walking that tightrope. And, well, it is like walking that tightrope. I mean, you know, the, the physicality of the Walindas or whatever, or, you know, these guys who, you know, go from oh. uh, a tower to tower in New York, et cetera. That is a real thing that these people do. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, you can talk about, you know, they train in, in gymnastics since they were three years old and all that. Yeah, that's true. But guess what? At, it, at that moment, they put their oh, tutus man. on or whatever they wear. <laughs> And that's it. So to me, this is what this, that's the, this yeah. is the, the visual arts equivalent of that, but it's informed by skill. It's informed sure. by practice. It's informed by, uh, uh, on that, again, if you want to call it the spiritual thing, that it's going to be all right. Right. Just right. do it. That the trust. And yeah. that what I've noticed a lot is like, oh, oh, I've, this is a different set of roads. This is a different mm. place. But I remember this situation, and I know that I think I need to take a left here because I've done the right, one to the right yes. before in a different exactly time, right. different place, and it's, right. it's really just following yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're yeah. you're just really touching yeah. that. So curious, you know, mm -hmm. in making this work, do you have any preconceived idea um, when you begin? Sometimes I do. I, I'm happening to look at uh, the uh, computer screen, and uh, this looks to be the uh, Polka Dot series yes. specific to uh, Jack Johnson, the uh, turn of the 20th century uh, uh, heavyweight champion of the world, African-American. Very bold. He was like the Miles Davis of boxing, and uh, he did everything that uh, an African American should not do, and he, he got away with it for a long time, you know. So there's, and the connection to the the boxing is it's an art form. I, I was I, I was into sports younger. Right now, it's like who won what? I have no idea, and right, I'm not really right. interested. But the point of it is. There was a time where um, I wasn't into boxing, and it wasn't about the violence. I don't know. And it was with Muhammad Ali oh. that I saw it was operatic, it's balletic, it is an oh, art right. form. It was absolutely beautiful in the same way that I think people uh, have begun to recognize that some of the moves, the plays, uh, the energy and the gestures of, say, basketball, for instance, is absolutely an art form. Mm -hmm. So there's that, there's the, the African-American identity, uh, and so this goes back to your question about, you know, do I go in with a, a preconceived notion about what I'm doing? Yes and no. In the past, probably more so because I didn't feel that confident necessarily to be where I'm at now. It took doing these little more controlled, mm -hmm. uh, contrived, if you will, uh, kind of uh, subject specific things uh, that I would call, and what I'm looking at is pretty much pure collage. Uh, again, not having the confidence, uh, and this is like 10, 15 years ago, to uh, pick up a paintbrush, yeah, et cetera, yeah. much less with color on it. So, yeah, you know, for a long time it was about uh, uh, themes, th thematic. Uh, mm -hmm. and, I mean, when I, I moved to San Francisco in 75, I had the uh, privilege when talking about dealing with, you know, uh, being exposed to genius mentors in the media and this and music and in... Uh, visual arts, I, I got taken under the wing for a time by Rene Yanez at Galleria del Riasa and uh, Studio oh, 24. Wow. And we, he, he taught me how to curate. Uh, he uh, channeled me into a California Arts Council, uh, National Endowment for the Arts, on the you know administrative side. But we did a lot of um, uh, electrographic art making. There was a color Xerox machine. And I, I, I wrote some poems about, I'm living in the mission until I get sick, meaning that I was eating. And it, please get it the way I mean it. Mexican food, day, <laughs> night, uh, you know, from, you know, eight in the morning, I'm in the mission making art until three in the morning, you know what I mean? So, and the getting sick part was the fumes, the plastic. Yeah, from you the, were the, killing yourself. Yeah, I was killing food. me. Yeah, yeah, and the food yeah. wasn't. I was Food's killing awesome. myself. From the, yeah. but, but, you know, it, it, so there's the mentoring part. There's the um, opportunity part. There's the exposure to teachers, to mentors that I took a liking to me or enjoyed my energy or whatever. But, you know, it, it helped kind of formulate or helped me formulate and gave me the fiscal physical opportunity yes. to uh, actually uh, have studio space and a gallery to hang my stuff, et cetera, so I could kind of learn what the heck I was doing. Right, yeah, right. yeah. These days what it's about is I go into the studio and I want to experiment with materials. And I, I, I think verbally this isn't quite it, but 
every single day it's like, well, have I still got it? Have I still got it? You know what I mean? Because seriously? it's like, seriously, every, wow. of course. Of course, yeah. because I'm going like, wow, I'm surprised. And look, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. good and it da, is da, da. confirming. You it is in. confirming, yeah. absolutely. Yes. But it's still, it's a terror. I mean, there's a certain, I feel a certain audacity. It's like, oh, really? Yeah. You're going to go make some art. Well, right, yeah, right, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right. You know, but yeah. th that, that's just, that's my way. That's my practice. These are the demons that I have, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And um, I continue to do it because I, I continue to get up to this day anyway, pretty good results, you know, yeah, things yeah, are pretty no satisfactory, kidding. you know? No kidding. Tell me about this piece here. Again, uh, you can see Jack Johnson uh, peeking out on the, on the side there. Uh, to the right, and this is funny, and then this is all Xerox and found materials. And so you just uh, have like a big box of stuff. I, I've got a big box I left in the car, just, uh -huh. and that was one of about 10 big uh, storage uh, locks. Some are for the Global Art Project, some are frags for myself, some are for my mentees. Right. Some are like table scraps that, you know, I painted something, but oh, the table trash is far more interesting. So I got a big box full of that yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's funny to, today um, I, I had a, a situation not to date this but between us you know my car got screwed right and uh, so I had to go down to the Mission Police Station on 17 oh my God. right I've but it was my great stomping grounds in the day because I, I don't hang that much in the mission I don't get an occasion and what I used to do um, we call it there's a woman a Australian artist Lorna Crane she calls it um, uh, uh, billboard rips or peels and, uh, you know, naturally, there's this natural deterioration of uh, billboards and public uh, yes, posters yes, yes. that, you know, by attrition, oh, you can rip rips, them off. Yeah. And so now a lot of my art is reflective of that appreciation of that kind of natural uh, deterioration. But uh, when I was d doing primarily or almost solely collage, that gave an element that I was unable or I couldn't fathom how to translate that into paint right. or buy paint. So right. no, it's okay, just slap it on and it's okay. So this is like some of that on the right with the legs, that's like uh, two pieces, uh, I think possibly an overlay. Uh, I mean, you've you got yeah. materials like uh, transparencies yeah, run through a machine, say, it's right? So cool. There's this, this, just that little area here. That's actually part of the Coca-Cola logo that we superimpose with the transparency, and then you know, kind of transmuted itself into this. Well, I, I recall working on this one. Uh, you got uh, the uh, not the uh, Santeria uh, symbols, but I think just straight Catholic Church, uh, uh, not Lotterias, but the cards, the uh, the oh, religious those, cards, yes, etc. Yeah. yeah. The little yeah, and, and you know that that the, the, for that anyway. When I was a kid, I was really fascinated by Catholicism. I'm, I'm like from this is I'm a Methodist grew up like this. This is a Methodist being decided, okay, as opposed to the Baptist. Yeah, whoa, whoa, you know what I mean. So we were middle class, right? We were like you know a little too sophisticated for that, you know. So I was really intrigued by uh, Catholicism and those kind of symbols. Uh, though I, I kind of stay away from these now, like even the Frida Kahlo thing that was really hot when I first moved here, and, and I think much more authentic. Uh, it, that idea about, oh, that's our stuff, and you know, now everyone's got it, so right, I, I right, don't want right, it anymore. Right. I think that with, with the, the Jack Johnson stuff, and I know we're going to move to something else, which is great, you know, there was just something for me very magical and uh, almost politically necessary uh, for me to express those things consciously. Uh, so uh, that goes back or harkens back to uh, the question about how much is uh, what preconceived or what, yeah, I right, have an idea. Right. I don't, th these days, and I'm really thinking before I say it, I don't think that I go into the studio with a preconceived idea. The materials dictate what's going yeah, on yeah. for me. Where, uh, and, you know, and you know what it's like. Uh, this piece that I'm looking at right now. What's this one called? It's not know. called anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, it's an untitled piece. It could, could, could but, be called but you know Paul. what I call it? <laughs> It's like untitled and in parentheses, pa, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. But, and that's just for, and by the way, I've just lately, because I've been luckily pretty uh, productive, I, I've had to start giving titles. So they'll be, they'll be the same way I work. They'll be random titles. They'll be like Captain Beefheart type titles, like, you know, Fat Pocket Number One or something like this, yeah, you know. Right, so, right. But I'm having fun title. with it's, it's, yeah. it's important. Well, the titling is the same as the yeah. art making. Exactly. It's just disparate pieces right. brought together and right. the sum becomes interesting. To you, well, here's the deal with that because you also kind of like, uh, I think, carve out a niche uh, stylistically with what you are titling things. You can, you know, yeah, in the same yeah, way. Yeah. Because I just, you know, 
oh, well, if you need to give it a title because it leads the viewer into, and I'm going like, dude, I'm not trying to lead the viewer. This is the work. That's it. I don't need a title saying, and by the way, this is what it's about. Screw that. Man. Yeah, you yeah. Know? But, to give, yeah. but the title can give another yes, access course, point, right? Course. You know, that, that, that's, that, that's, weird, being, that's me yeah. being belligerent. Right, that's right, all. Right. But at the same, but as I say right now, I'll give you, for instance, you've got thin, slow, mall, tight, uh, just, I would imagine, a random yes. signage on yes. here. Well, for me, it's like I would say Jan Mall type something, and that's the name of the piece. For instance, or uh, here's just, uh, you know, uh -huh. I'm, I'm reading two or three things I found, and there's, there's a poetic resonance here, and that'll be the title of that piece. Yes, so yes. I, I, need to, I need to have as much fun with labeling things well, as I sure. do with making the work. And, and you're, you're a writer and a yeah. poet, and it's but putting those words together, they yeah. just have resonance, yeah. and then it's like, yeah, that has some juice. Yeah. You know, put that with right. this. Right. I and, love that, putting two things together. Yes. I mean, that's ultimately what we're doing. We're taking one thing uh -huh. and going around, going with this, no, with this, and it yes. makes absolutely no rhyme yes, or reason, exactly. but, but when you get it, <laughs> It's awesome. And then yeah. other people, what blows me away is that other people who have no knowledge about this at all, you know, walk by and go, well, I don't, I want that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which how is about crazy. that? How about like, that? I'm so happy that happens. Yeah. Well, you know, what, what's, what's funny is uh, a lot of times the thing that we resist the most sometimes just becomes the most appealing, most dynamic mm -hmm. thing that we can do. And that, <laughs> and, 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 and as far as like the commercial end of it, you know what? I know, you know, that this is good. This yeah. one worked. Right, and right. It, it'll take three years to sell or if somebody to preach it, but that's okay. And then one that's like, I will never say it's just slapped off or something, but you feel like, you know what? Somebody says, oh my God, you know, da da da, yeah, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. You, so you can't tell. So I, I, I do, I, <laughs> I both absorb or at least listen or observe people's responses. Uh, what they say about it or how yeah. they're looking at the yeah, work. Yeah, I think it's interesting. It is very interesting, but you know what? At the same time, or maybe at the appropriate time, it's like, you know, that's okay, whatever it is. You may, you may love it, and you may not get it, or you want to talk about it. Oh, I, I see my grandmother in that abstract, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah good, okay, good, I, yeah, good. that's good, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so what is the, what is the, some of the, uh, you know, big realizations lately or big aha moments or or just like that you that have hit you recently mm -hmm. about your work and how you're approaching it mm -hmm. thank you uh it, again it's a good question and and that shifts and that changes what gets me excited and I mean, let me let me just say yeah, yeah, please, let me please. just say one more thing <laughs> what i've seen what i've just seen witness mm -hmm. on instagram and yeah, just yeah, kind yeah. of tracking you is you you are really producing right now. I am, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and it's cool. Yeah, and and so, what what happened? What catalyzes that kind of thing? Or what? what gotcha. Uh, opportunity first, you know, uh, uh, and fear. I'm someone with a personality that uh, I have, uh, and this isn't psychological analysis. I have great moments of high, of great moments of productivity. And I've also can plunge the depths where nothing's happening, uh, every, you know, every, I, I, two left feet kind of thing in yeah, my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I have had enough of these experiences. I'm uh, when we're taping this next month, I'll be 66. You know, yes, I know, I look 40, but uh, Jeez, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I've had a long run uh, in life, not just in making art. And um, when I can do well, I kick it, I push it. I, I, I was beginning to say that I, what I used to do was uh, juggle 20 balls at once. It was suggested to me by a therapist, uh, which was like revolutionary thought. It was so simple. I'll tell you how far away I can be. Uh, he, and I don't remember the he or she, but th this person said, here's what you might do. Put all the balls down. Pick up one. Complete that thing. When you're done, put that down. Pick up something else. And it was like, wow, what an idea. <laughs> Because so much of my stuff is like sensation based. Oh, this really feels good to yeah, do right, this, to accomplish right. these things. And there is the attrition of age and uh, experience and all this, that, and the other. I mean, my brain may think it's still 20 or 30 years old, but every once in a while the body says, nah, yeah, you got yeah. it. You, why don't you go take a well, nap? And, and you when know? you move the goalposts <laughs> in, actually, there's more. I mean, picking there up that more. one thing, yeah. you can, it's, there's no shortage. Yeah. 
because that ball becomes infinitely more complicated and interesting and there's depth. So you see the, the dynamic of the fear, you see what I mean? That I need to accomplish as much as I can now. Oh. That you see what I mean? So it's like like time's running out. Time yeah. is running out, and this, I've been thinking this way since I was twenty. So it's not about <laughs> like right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And um, I, I'm and and, and it, 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 I'm a little. I am obviously talking about it, but I, I would be normally a little hesitant to to really quote reveal that. But that is the truth. Um, so I'm I'm feeling now having been able to examine that. And kind of calm down a little bit. That it's okay. Right. I'm able, as you say, you know, narrowing, narrowing the, the playing field or narrowing the goalpost. It is much richer now that I don't have that sense of like desperation, career-wise or production-wise, or my own satisfaction in making work. And uh, the other part of it that does come into play is that I respond to the materials, and I'm responding to things like house paint. You know, right. So you brought some of these. I brought a few of these guys, right? And here's the other thing. This is like uh, a fiscal advice to the up and coming artist, dude. The best uh, art store is the street. Okay. The best art store is uh, the uh, paint store, or you know, like uh, what is it, Sherwin Williams? Yeah. These are like failed, failed mixed oh, yeah, pieces these are for the them. Paint. And yeah, yeah. So the deal of it is, is that these palettes work for me. Uh, and uh, a lot of times, like I've been uh, staying with my brother in Oregon, I went to, I go to a shop and the guy just gives them to me. I'm here in San Francisco, it's a couple of bucks for this. So yeah, th this, yeah. so it also opens up the non-preciousness. Right, and I can right. just really play and waste things And this whatever. is acrylic based paint. That obviously. is acrylic it's based mostly paint. mostly what you use acrylic Yes, exactly. I do, I, um, uh, when I was uh, maybe 14, strangely enough, completely not knowing what I was doing, I was fascinated by the Surrealists. I really liked Dolly. It, it, not just because of his nutty stuff and his dreamlike stuff, because uh, I think it's four or five years old, that I said, well, dude, that's just like the dreams I have. And I, so I, I gravitated toward it. And I tried to duplicate them. I then, which to me is what abstraction is about. You know, here's a portrait of, you know, Queen Elizabeth or whatever, but what's interesting is the way that the material in her robe is, and that's what I focus on, and that's what I kind of expand into yeah, my right, sense of abstraction. Right, right. So I did a lot of the Dolly Clouds. I actually showed back east at 14, and uh, I, I absolutely didn't know what I, I knew I was enjoying myself, but then I got, you know, more into music, et cetera. So my, my deal was is not so much a rejection of uh, the Western tradition. Um, I was one of these people that I just, you know, it's just my makeup. I, I refused to, to uh, study it. I refused to, you know, to, you know, to, to mm, kowtow. Totally uh, yeah, right, I refused right. to do it. Uh, and it, it works to my benefit and, of course, <laughs> to my detriment. Uh, and so my, my, my art education has been completely backwards. Uh, which is fine. It works yeah, for me. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, right. it, it seems to work for me. I don't recommend it for everybody, but it mm -hmm. seems to work for me. Yeah. So I'm responding to the materials. Uh, a new color excites me. Combinations of colors excite me. Uh, using uh, tools, and again, this is back to the economics. This little scraper is a buck at uh, Walmart. And I know that's politically incorrect, but nonetheless, uh, you can get them at Ace Hardware, etc. And you can kind of do the, uh, the Richter uh, effect with these with uh, different applications of paint in uh, either straight across or here or different planes of uh, the paper or the canvas and you can get all kinds of like fluid yeah. flowing effects or straight up and down lines right. and they can serve as uh, the basis for something or they can be uh, through layering um, pieces or entities in themselves. Do you use gels with this stuff? At I all? do, I know, do. Like, I, 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 like on this piece, is this, there's a photograph, is yeah. that glued on with gel, this paw piece? Yeah, I, I, as I recall, this guy, uh, I used, uh, say, a matte medium or something, but you know, I'm also into. How big uh, is this one, by the way? Yes, Pace. Uh, I think this guy, you know, he, it may just be a 12 by 12 oh, okay. Uh, okay. on board or something. He's not a real big guy. Okay. And as a matter of fact, I did a series. Uh, based on the materials that I had that I call little fellas, and this was one of them. Uh, I did a piece called Shud, which was shut up for an a Israeli friend of mine that we tease each other, and uh, we called it Shud. And uh, I, a lot of times, you know, what I'm doing absolutely has to do with what I have available to me. Right, know? right. Yeah, 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 you're an opportunist. I mean, yeah, yeah. absolutely so, because I think that that's part and parcel. I think it's opportunistic to make art. 
you know, because you're, you're taking advantage of that moment yeah. uh, of, of creativity yeah. or of, of birth or realization. And so it goes hand in hand with the, the, the modes and the materials that I use. Um, right now, see, this is funny. <laughs> in San Francisco, I scrap, right? Um, I, I got these like 30 by 40 sheets of uh, re refused... Uh, Mm, laminated uh, print paper, post paper that, oh, uh, that, okay. that was commercial. Yeah. And it really, uh, paint flows on it and like the scrapers or a paintbrush just, I mean, it's just magical to me. And I love that <laughs> sense of translucency and you can do a lot of layering with it. Well, I, I probably had about 3,000 sheets of it, a big, big stack. Wow. I used it, I made pieces. As a matter of fact, this guy might be on that. I also was pretty generous with it because I figured I was given the opportunity to get a lot of it very cheap. So, you know, with my uh, students, workshop people, whatever, right, right. I, I had it available to them. Huh. So in that, not just this, but I use Bristol paper, I use water uh, color paper, etc. depending upon what I want to achieve. A lot of times with the Bristol paper, I have so much uh, uh, media on it that it's just kind of, you know, wimpy. So perhaps, and I haven't done it lately, but I used to... Uh, and then apply it to uh, uh, gel it onto uh, boards, etc. Right. So and using the gel as a glue you and got squeegeeing. You got it. it. Like you got that. it. And also right. as an archival thing or something to give me one surface to work to the next surface. But what this is also something that I do. I like to exhaust things absolutely until there's nothing left. And how that, do you mean? Like well, it, the materials. If I had oh. three thousand sheets of that paper I described, oh my as God. I ran out of it, then. I felt that I wanted to move. I love paper, absolutely. But uh, I'm, I'm going, say, backwards now, and I'm wanting to work a larger format canvas, you know? Uh -huh. And so, there was, there, see, this is all part of my personality makeup. I didn't make that shift until I had run out of all the paper. So I had to exhaust that. I had to exhaust the material. I had oh, to exhaust the... So it's almost like your, your, the chronology or the, or the path that you're walking is mm -hmm. dictated in part by the resources that you have found mm -hmm. on your journeys around. Yeah. And when those run out, it's time to like find more. What's well, a cool idea. Absolutely. I, well, and you it's know perfect what? for how you work. It's, I mean, it's, 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 well, that, you see, that, the sourcing the, the materials is part of the, your, your art. Have, the, yeah, well, the, you know what, that's why, you know, even to have then jumped into, uh, I'll, I'll start naming these damn things again, and then I have to find a way that was enjoyable to me, so that it's the same methodology. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. So yes. There's, there's a, this is what I was saying when we began this uh, uh, talk. Um, there is a line of uh, a consistency of continuity in my mind, anyway, on every level of how I operate. Yes, and yes. it's and I, I've got to do that to stay interested. I have to do that to stay interested. Um, and and then I also talked about the fear thing. It's like in back of the mind, it's like okay, you want to work larger again, very big, and you want to go back to canvas. Well, one way to do that to creep into it is, you know, the whaling wall, which is extremely right. large, it can be, etc. And it's like, okay, I, I, you know, I feel like I have the facility to do that. And I'm bringing some other people along that journey as well. Yeah. Because, you know what, I, I, I didn't consciously understand or realize it was after the fact that I, I'm a very selfish person. I am ultimately extremely selfish. Everything has got to, for me, has got to come back. It's about me. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm also a very generous, open guy. So I, I've got no yeah. middle ground. Right, and I recognize right. that in myself. And I'm okay with it. So, yeah, let's collaborate. But guess what? Don't knock on the studio door for a couple of days because I'm working on my stuff. I just learned from you, dude. Thanks a lot. You got a nice thing out of it. Okay, I'll see you in a little right. bit. So it's a, it's a coming and a going yeah, and, and an yeah, opening and a closing. Yes, it and it's is. all part of that. Yes, you know? it is. Yes, it is. Carl, listen, thank you so much my for pleasure. Um, coming in today and sharing us with your work. Absolutely. And, uh, really, really appreciate it. My pleasure. Absolutely. Yeah.